interview with Sensei. Huh? Are you guys enjoying this? Because I sure am. So, last interview, we, we briefly touched on a topic that we would like to do tonight. Hopefully, you guys you will, will enjoy it. Is what's real and what's fake in martial arts? Or what's combative there you go. and what's sport? There you go. That's that sounds, more technical. Yeah, that sounds nicer. Yeah? <laughs> what's combative and what's flashy? Uh, There's a big call to big call to flash because if you want to sell it it's got to be movie like it's got to be flash uh, early on I had a, a person who wanted to advise me on uh, marketing details in my martial art this is how you market this and I was listening because I had at the time I had been teaching for six years word of mouth was the only thing that got me students and I really wasn't good at advertising because I didn't even know how to I still don't. But uh, he was telling me, do the throws. Take pictures of people upside down. That's the flash. That's the flash of your art. That's the, that's the selling point. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing. But, uh, but a lot of people do flash just for flash. I mean, we happen to do technique that has flash in it. Because if you take a picture at the specific right time and somebody's upside down, they're oh, upside down then that looks flashy, so so to the marketing experts, that's sellable. But there's a lot of flash that's out there that's just flash for the purpose of flash, for the purpose of flash, for the purpose of selling. You know, it's just like... There's no real martial arts in it, it's just flash? It's just flash. Who needs to do a... I've seen this, you know, 360 degree jumping, spinning kick. If you need to go 360 degrees, you're going back to where you started. Why not just kick them? Why are you spinning to kick? You know, if you did a 180 degree spin, that makes sense. He's behind you. Right. But why are you doing a 360 degree spin? He's right there. Mm. I'm going to leave the target for a while and then come back and hit him. That's a little weird. You like wait there while you complete two more rotations. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> and you know, and whatever. I'm not trying uh, to judge anything. You know, well, do I'm going to play want. devil's advocate and say, you know, those people who do those types of um, kicks would say it generates more power. Okay. Well, all right. So, so the problem with the generation of more power is that, yes, you are in motion, and a body in motion tends to stay in motion. This is science. But the difficulty is that it doesn't. It does not tend to stay in motion when there is an obstruction. And the purpose behind a kick is to meet that obstruction. Mm. And the difficulty is that when you... Well, the difficulty is the law of cause and effect. The second law that, that comes into play is the law of least resistance. Why are you going to impact me when you are in the air? If you're in the air, it's mm. easier for you to move through the air than it is for you to move through bone and flesh. Mm. So, as long as you're airborne, you're weightless in a way, in a very real way, and you will be thrusted back through the air before you are thrusting into me. It's, if you're kicking and pushing off of the ground, or pushing off of another object, if you have your hand on an object, obviously, and, no you're, and you're kicking, that mm -hmm. makes sense. You're pushing off of something stable mm -hmm. to impact me, and the love, cause, and effect, or every every action is an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Science, people. Makes sense. You're going to impact me, and you're going to be able to deal with that reaction. Better than being airborne. Yeah. Being airborne, you can't deal with it. You just Because you're weightless. You're kicking yourself. You're kicking yourself. Hmm. If you're airborne. Okay, so that's fake. We can put that on the fake list. We can put that on the flash list. Can we put that on the flash yes. list? Yes. Flash list is the, is the triple turn spinning kick. I'm not interested in calling anybody fake. That's not... There's nothing... I mean, he's really doing it. Sure. I've seen people, like, do crazy stuff. For real. For and, real. But I was in... I don't know if I ever told you this, but back in um, 1996, I think it was. Mm. 1996. I was asked to go to the New Jersey Metropolitan Open uh, Karate Championships. 
It wasn't just for karate, kai, it was for all, all forms of martial arts, supposedly. They were down on a judge for breaking. Now, I didn't know anything at the time about breaking. I was a ninjutsu practitioner at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just started with Aikibujutsu, so I didn't know anything about breaking, but they were down one judge, and they wanted another one, and they saw a black belt around my waist, because I, I came to the tournament with uh, my old sensei, who was a uh, stand tripper. And they asked me if um, if I would judge a breaking competition. I said, I don't know anything about breaking. No, 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 you got a black belt. You know, <laughs> you know all about breaking, so it's time for you to judge. Oh, oh wow. Oh, okay. Ooh. Right? Wow, so I go, really? Yeah, no, yeah. So I go, well, I've never judged anything before, and I'm not qualified. So this bad. is me going, I'm not qualified. No, 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 you're qualified. you got a black belt around your waist. You're qualified. Okay. Did they give that to you? No, they didn't give that to me. Did you earn that black belt? Yeah, I earned that uh, black belt. Well, then you're qualified. Yeah, but I don't know anything about breaking. So. Um, that's pretty funny. It's weird. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty sad. Like, if they're, if they're going to hire, that's evidence that they're actually employing judges that don't know anything about what's going on in the competition. That's evidence. Yeah, but it gets weirder. So the first guy's out, he's going to break glass. And they're like little strips of glass, they're like this big. And he's putting them on top of bricks, and he's, he stacked four of them. No spacer. Hardcore. Uh, kind of. No spacers? No spacers is hardcore, but... But they're but they're glass. I mean, it's totally totally kidding here. It, no, it could no, be it no could spacers, be hardcore. You if know. you do karate and you don't use spacers, you're hardcore. That's right. So the thing is that it was spanned over a larger you know large section like that. But whatever. The point is, it was weird. And he's going to break it with his face, which wait, is wait, wait. very weird. He's breaking how many panels of glass? I think it was four. Four it was with three no or four. spacers. Three or four no spacers. And he's going to do it with his head. With his head. And he wasn't going to hit like you head a ball in, in soccer, which would have been smart. He's going to hit it with like a flat part of his fore, forehead. Flat, but whatever. Flash? Is this flash or is this real combative? Would you use that on the, on the battlefield? I would not do that, no. Would you use that on the battlefield? No. Because you want to hit with the strongest part of your head. You want to hit with your where your hairline. Those of us that are lucky... You know, have a hairline. Trust me, folks. I won't Mind have a hairline. Man. I won't have a hairline for very long. But as you can see from these previous videos, uh, anyways, the point is that uh, that's where you want to hit. You want to hit with the strongest part of your skull. But he wasn't doing that. He was hitting with this. Whatever, right? So he's breaking that. The second contestant is breaking a bat. There's like no rules to this. He's breaking a bat with his shin. And his plan is that this guy's going to swing a, a bat into his shin, and he's going to kick it at the same time that it's swinging, and he's going to break it. Okay, wait. The fat end of the bat no, or the no, skinny no. end? See, Skin. that's just... Well, no, I'm it's not. Impressed. not. What, are you kidding I me? Wanna, I want to see the fat end get broken with the shin. I'm very impressed. I'd be impressed then. I'm No, I'm impressed with the skinny end, and the reason why is because bats are typically made out of very hard wood. Yeah. Unless that guy's got a balsa wood bat... <laughs> I mean that is a hard, hard. I've wood. seen people break those bats in the in the in the area of the skinny part. I want to see them break it. I'll be impressed when they can break it on the fat part. All right, but the problem with this this event, well, I'll get to it. Okay. So the okay, so the first guy, all right, but the third guy, the third guy is a grandmaster, and he's he's got two guys on on two six foot ladders, uh, opposing each other. Never forget this. And he's got a. A pine board that he's going to break with grain, which isn't impressive. But the two guys are going to climb the six-foot ladders and they're going to suspend it like this on each side of the six-foot ladders. And the guy's going to, you know, jump upside down and, and kick through the board when it's upside down. So, <clears throat> so there was another guy there too who was breaking uh, tile, ceramic tile, and he was going to do it with his fist. 